for some real education. The Roman aqueduct was a channel used to transport fresh water to highly populated areas. Though earlier civilizations in Egypt and India also built aqueducts, the Romans improved on the structure and built an extensive and complex network across their territories. Evidence of aqueducts remain in parts of modern day France, Spain, Greece, North Africa, and Turkey. Besides great feats of engineering, they are also architectural works of art. Why is it that when you introduce these, this section, all of a sudden you become Lovey Howell from Gilligan's Island? Anyway, yes, Roman architectural aqueducts. We're back on our theme of absolutely functional engineering that is in, an, in and of itself an amazing artistic achievement. Take a look at some of these pictures there. There is a typical Roman aqueduct. And what they did is, I mean, they use the columns. You see the columns there. It, you could argue that the Greek contribution to architecture was the column, a remarkable remarkable thing and all the, the ver their variety and diversity and all their usefulness in building pu uh, places, temples like the Parthenon the, on the Acropolis. Here you have the Romans who took the columns and added the arch and all of a sudden a column, right, where the, for the, the force of all the weight on top of it goes down a straight line which limits the ability to build on it, you, which is why Greek monuments, by the way, like the Acropolis, uh, like the Parthenon, are so small when you see them. The thing that shocks people when they go to the Parthenon is how tiny it is. But you see what the Romans did. The Romans were able to engineer monumentally by having those arches between the columns where the, the force of the weight on top is actually dispersed all the way down the long length of that arch. And so without the Romans, we wouldn't, the Romans gave us indoor plumbing, almost most cities in Roman Empire, all across the Roman Empire, had literally water in their in all their cities, fresh flowing water. And if you go back to the take, show some of these other pictures of the of these monuments. That on the left there you see the trough that would be on the top of the monument. And it, it's just gently sloping for miles and 50, 60, 100 miles. And that water comes right from melting snow or other uh, systems of water up in the hills of the mountains, and it comes cascading on down right into, oftentimes right into people's living rooms. So it's an amazing thing. And, and the Romans, they tried to go around rocks and mountains if they had to, but they were not averse to digging through them. And imagine digging through a mountain without, elect, without the kind of dirt and, and rock moving uh, machines that we now have. It's pretty staggering. Uh, you could see that m very often the, the, most of the aqueducts were underground when they came to mountains. Couldn't, rather than building them up and down, didn't, it wouldn't work, right? If, you, if it, any time over the course of the aqueduct's progress into a city, it had to go up instead of down, the water would end, right? The water could not climb. But wherever necessary, you could see, and most of the aqueduct was buried below ground. And you see the cisterns there, and then you got a valley there, and you can see where in that valley, that, that beautiful aqueduct spans the bridge. Go to the next picture. You can see the, the, the sister, the chute there through the water where it comes. And then you can see uh, in the picture on the right just how elaborate and beautiful they are, right? I mean, they, the, not just in terms of the, the way they look, their aesthetic, which is gorgeous, by the way. Uh, much, better, much better looking than this kind of suspension bridge we have, I think. Much more elegant. Now, again, it wasn't for foot travel. It wasn't for course and carriage. It was very pragmatic, but really gorgeous, too. And you can see there the brickwork, the stonework. You see what kind of people the Romans were, right? That when they, besides being just incredibly innovative, whether it was architecture or engineering or a thousand other things that the Romans did extremely well, uh, there was always this sense that they did it in a, in a monumental, dramatic style. On the Dr. Duke show, we've, in, in Instant Classics, we did the Pantheon. We've looked at that before. Uh, and we will look at other really feats of Roman engineering and artistry brought together through that particular genius there. And you can see those aqueducts all the way across the Roman Empire, from England all the way almost to India. And the interesting thing, from about 300 BC to about 280, about 500 years, five centuries, all the aqueducts that we see, the ones that remain and the ones that have fallen, were more or less constructed by the Empire of the Romans.